Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, I'm Matt Jackson, General Manager of Sales at Creditor Watch, and I'm lucky enough today to show off our uh, not new but revamped product, Data Logic. Um, I get the glory of showing all the fancy work that our dev team have been doing over the last uh, four months to redevelop this product into an amazing um, tool to be used by credit managers, financial controllers, CFOs, and anyone in the business that wants to get a better understanding of their portfolio and debtors. So uh, first of all, that's me in the middle there. Uh, that was at the JP Morgan Challenge. Uh, if anyone knows Alex, who's to my right, um, make sure you ask him who won that day. It'd be good for him to say it out loud. Before we get started, uh, just some general housekeeping. There's some question. There's a question bar on the GoToWebinar panel where you can ask questions. Um, if you have a question throughout the webinar, I won't be able to answer it as we go along, but we'll get in contact with you straight after the webinar. We usually have some great questions from um, from our attendees. There'll also be a couple of poll questions today, uh, which I'll be putting up during the webinar. There'll also be a recording of the webinar available via uh, on our website and also sent to you post uh, today. So if you miss anything or have to duck out early, uh, you'll be able to catch up or rewatch it. So first of all, a little bit about Creditor Watch. I'm assuming most of you know who we are, um, but Creditor Watch uh, is Australia's leading and most innovative credit bureau in Australia. We focus and specialise on B2B transactions, so um, any entity with an ABN or an ACN. And our products fit into kind of five main pillars. Uh, the, set, the one we're looking at today is um, Data Logic. And Debtor Logic is an age trial balance tool which um, helps people better manage their debtors. Some of the other highlights are uh, Creditor Watch, which is our core product, which looks at credit reporting and monitoring. Uh, directed due diligence, which allows you to deep dive into directors and see if they've been bad in the past. Apply Easy is our online credit application. And PPSR Logic is our um, PPSR or PPSA registration tool, which has recently won an Australian Innovation uh, Award for Best New Product. So we're just going to pop into a poll question for now. And that is, are you currently using or have access to Data Logic? This will give us a good understanding of who's using it and who's not, and help those that um, may be using it get better value out of it. Great, thank you for that. So just a bit of background on Data Logic and why we've recently had an update. Uh, Data Logic's been a product with Creditor Watch for close to five years. Um, it's a great, great tool to help uh, people manage their receivables in a slightly different way than what they're used to, and also analyse their portfolio. But we were finding that due to the increased amount of data inputs that were coming into Data Logic, uh, the old system was a little bit slower. So there was a big emphasis on making it faster, simpler, and an easier to use experience. Also, um, we had feedback from customers that it wasn't as intuitive as the rest of the website. So we've spent a lot of time and effort allowing you to um, essentially jump into Data Logic and hopefully understand the graphs a little bit better. We've put some how-to guides in there and some step-by-step -step comparisons. We've also added a whole heap of new data sets. So state and industry have been added, um, including a, a huge um, increase in the number of trade lines available, populating into Data Logic, making it, the data much richer. Um, and also a big part of Data Logic is all about challenging collections. So we've added a propensity to pay meter, which is an algorithm that looks at payment terms, risk information, your outstandings, and really highlighting accounts that you should be collecting money off first that are not necessarily the oldest accounts. 
So for those who aren't accessing Data Logic, what is Data Logic? Um, Data Logic is really an ATB analysis tool that allows you to challenge the way that you prioritise collections. Traditionally, people go after the oldest accounts first, um, and our adage is that yes, it's important to collect those old outstanding accounts, but sometimes it's difficult to get blood out of a stone. So by focusing your collections priority um, slightly in a slightly earlier area of your ATB potentially can have a bigger impact over your DSO. Not only that, it's a great opportunity for you to identify customers you should be selling more to, um, industries that you have fantastic penetration in and should focus on, um, or potentially industries that um, create a very low margin for you. So it might be better to focus your attention in other areas. Um, Data Logic is a great tool because um, it really uses uh, the widest a range of our data within our bureau. Um, just to explain where the data comes from, um, we have two main sources for our payment information, which basically calculates a lot of the scores in Data Logic. Firstly, we have corporate customers providing their age trial balance, typically on a monthly basis. Um, and this information is fantastic because it's coming from the best paid companies in Australia and there's a significant volume there. So we're getting lots of information from those corporate companies, um, which allows us in this system to compare how you get paid. Something that they, that's very unique to Creditor Watch, however, is that we're the only bureau in Australia to gather small business payment information. So why this is so important? Um, is because these are the worst paid companies in Australia. They're the typ typically the first to identify if someone's having cash flow problems because they're the first companies not to get paid. And the great thing about Creditor Watch and this Data Logic product is by combining those two data sources, we get a really accurate view of how an entire market gets paid. Um, it allows us to make some more um, assumptions. Um, based on that zero and MYB data that's coming from our small business customers. Um, it's delivered more regularly than corporate data. So it really allows us to um, make some better averages and, and um, payment predictor terms. Other information that feeds into this product, there's a lot of risk information, typical things like court actions, defaults, mercantile inquiries, insolvency notices, uh, strike off actions, any type of risk information. And then we also overlay some other information around the entity. So how long it's been trading, um, how many directors there are, what industry the um, company operates in. And we know the risk of failure and we try and predict that uh, forward to help identify troublesome customers. So we're just gonna jump into Data Logic now and I'll give you a live demonstration of the product itself. So Data Logic can be located up the top once you've logged into Creditor Watch. Um, it's in the little toolbar at the top. You can see I've clicked through there. Um, if you're a subscriber to Data Logic, this will be unlocked. If not, um, there's a button there that allows you to express your interest in Data Logic, and then we can get in contact and um, help you set that process up. You'll notice uh, straight away if you've looked at Data Logic before, um, the design has mimicked our dashboard, which is our um, from our core product creditor watch. And we try and use the same type of uh, workflow so it's easy for everyone to understand. So first of all, these we have these four widgets. It tells you when your last age trial balance was uploaded, and we're about to view that in a second. We can also have a look at a historical analysis. So this is your trading accounts over a certain period. So for example, if I hit 12 months, this will show me the accounts over that 12 month period. Now, this is really good to help identify trends within your age trial balance. It will, it will let you know um, if you're seasonal, for example. So if you have a busy period between November and January for the Christmas period, um, or it might be height of grain season um, over the summer months, for example. This helps identify those um, current trends. The other trends we're looking for 
is in your um, specific buckets. So ideally, you're looking for trends in the one uh, current and one to 30 days overdue going up and trends in the 60 um, and over 90 day buckets to be going down. And that's essentially saying that there's more revenue coming in the door sooner, which is uh, the goal for, for all finance managers and credit managers out there. We go back to the overview. You can view the management reports that have uh, previously been extracted. So one of the big changes that we've done with this uh, system is rather than um, calculating all the data on the fly, we actually pre-populate and pre-calculate the data for you when you load an age trial balance and it's significantly improved the speed of the site. So rather than having to wait for the management uh, report to download, once you upload an ATB, we actually email you a copy and then you can come back in here and download that um, if you want to. So the management report basically details a few things. It uh, pulls out all the graphical representations that you find within Datalogic and it's a great way to pass a report up the chain. If you wish, you can put your logo on the management report. Um, or you can pick out uh, simple sections. For example, if I want to look at the high risk factors associated with my ATB, specific to an entity cancelled, being an ABN, um, it'll allow me to do that. So this has been a great um, tool that many of our customers use on a monthly basis for their reporting. We've also improved the ATB upload. Um, it's now a simple two-step process. You simply um, click browse and find the A to B on your desktop, put the date that the A to B was extracted and upload the data. If you've mapped an A to B previously, all the fields will uh, remain the same. So you can just click proceed. Um, if you're doing it for the first time, you can map the fields um, or we can do it for you. Just simply send it into Creditor Watch and we can help you out with it. Cool, so let's look at some analysis. And the best way to do that um, is basically by looking at the latest age trial balance. So as it's calculating, it's grabbing all the data from within our site and appending it to my last ATB that I've uh, basically uploaded. So when you click through, this is what you'll see. Um, on the cover page is just a breakdown of your receivables. Now you'll notice uh, these wagon wheels are a new addition to Creditor Watch and they actually allow you, allow you to click through and drill down in all the sections, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so I'll show you that in, in a second. First of all, if we look at the overview, um, we'll basically see um, you can break down into three main areas. Firstly, entity type. Um, so that will basically illustrate whether it's a um, public company, a private company, a trust or a partnership. It gives you the value of the accounts associated with that particular um, type of entity and also the total number. Um, we obviously know that dealing with private companies and public companies is less risky than sole traders, trusts and partnerships. Um, but it also allows you to identify the portions of your portfolio and when they are. Now, all of these are clickable. And if I do click it, it will take it take me straight to the age trial balance. Um, for example, if I wanted to look at the accounts that are sitting between 60 to 90 days that are also an Australian private company, I can simply click that segment and it will take me straight through to, to uh, those accounts. It will give me a credit score, an average days overdue for the payment predictor, and also it will detail the information um, that's in that segment. If all, also look at that overview and look at industry. Um, industry data is something that's been newly added to Creditor Watch, which is fantastic. Um, and that is based on industry SIP code, so the standard industry classification. Um, that industry data essentially allows you to determine what type of penetration you have in a market. 
Um, I think it's fantastic for companies to know what industries they operate in the strongest. So as you can see here, um, for example, over half of my, or close to half of my portfolio is construction companies. It tells you the number of entities that make up that, plus also the, also the dollar value. If I um, scroll down, it'll break that down for me even further. So it'll give me the industry, the uh, total count in that industry and the dollar values associated with those accounts that I deal with. You can once again drill down and it will take me to um, the ATB and I can then further break down into the segments, whether it's current, 30, 60, 90 days overdue. So with industries, I think it's a um, fascinating thing to look at. It allows you to basically determine the average dollar value of an account per industry. So for example, with construction, um, it might be my highest dollar value per cu uh, customer industry, and it might be something that the business may want to focus on in the future. Likewise, if we look at um, locational data, it will break down into states where those, in, um, those customers lie and the dollar values associated with that. So for example, with my portfolio here, um, with New South Wales, I know that my average customer spends 25K with me and in, New, and in Victoria, for example, it's slightly um, higher at 28k even though there's less accounts so it might be an opportunity for my business to further um, invest in new business in Victor Victoria for example. What it also allows me to do is see um, the type of um, information or the average days overdue so you can see a significant proportion 117 accounts of mine are overdue in New South Wales where if you compare to Victoria um, only 72. So it might actually be a better area for me to invest in this state um, because um, the accounts typically pay sooner. So it might be better for my DSO overall. Moving on uh, to risk analysis. So that all that data is basically coming from ASIC or our um, registry information and it's, it's overlaying. Now we kind of look at the juicy stuff, so the risk information associated with my portfolio. And you can see here that 320 accounts in my portfolio have some type of adverse information on it. And once again, if I click through, you'll go through to the risk categories and show the information associated with that. So the things I like to look for here, entities in strike off action, um, liquidation, winding up, et cetera. They're entities I wanna be uh, obviously chasing up as soon as possible. Strike off action especially, because the likelihood that that entity is registered in 45 days is very low. So you wanna try and recover any amount immediately. Liquidation, wind up, court actions, obviously quite severe adverse information. And then it's also great to look at the more predictive uh, type of adverse like payment defaults, uh, for example, an entity with a payment default um, is 50% likely to go into administration within 18 months. So it's essentially a, a flip of a coin whether that entity is going to be around in a year and a half. So they're the more predictive um, types of adverse that I like to look at. If you scroll down, you can also see that uh, dollar values associated with these type of risk information. Um, so you can see where those um, debts lie. If I click through, for example, I can then um, get a further breakdown of where that information um, sits according to my age trial balance. So I might want to chase up these strike off action um, accounts immediately. So now we're um, looking at a new tab called Customer Insights. Um, we basically redeveloped two of our um, graphs from last time, have helped by adding some additional information around a how-to guide or a, a what-to-do guide. Um, and I think they're really valuable. So first of all, we have a payment analysis, and this is combining all of Creditor Watch's payment information and putting it up against your age trial balance. So what it really does is helps you identify companies who are paying others on time, but you late. 
um, or adversely, people who are paying you on time but the market late. And I'll explain why that's important. Um, within the payment credit categories, you can actually highlight um, late, monitor or positive payment trends. And if you click into this area, it will basically uh, list those accounts below. But with this graph, the best way to interpret it is green is good, monitor the orange and avoid the red. And what it's really showing you is across the top, how you get paid versus down the side, how the market gets paid. So in this area, in the green area, these are customers that are paying you and the market on time. So these customers are quite stable in terms of their payment patterns typically. The other option in this area is typically that someone is paying COD and will have an adverse risk score, but we'll cover that in a second. Companies over here, they're paying you late, but the market on time. These companies are using you as a bank and they're a great opportunity for you to chase up these accounts specifically and try and bring their payment um, forward, which will significantly impact your DSO. So there's a, usually a couple of reasons for this. One is that you're potentially a non-critical supplier and they're able to jump around from supplier to supplier and um, get your goods elsewhere. So they might be able to rack up a, a bill with you, pay you at 90 days. Once you cut off credit, they can jump somewhere else. They get 90 days somewhere else and they come back and pay you and have that kind of cyclical cycle with two or three suppliers. Um, or the other option is um, that these are obviously very large companies um, and they're typical, um, have typical bad payment terms. So this is all either about re-educating debtors to say, no, it's not, you're not able to pay at 90 days by either, I know easier said than done, by potentially putting penalties in place or um, sending, bringing forward the demand letter process. So it kicks off slightly earlier than what they're used to. Um, another great way to re-educate debtors is using Creditor Watch defaults and also our logo on your invoices. And this really warns uh, debtors that if payment isn't received, there is a consequence to non-payment. Down in this corner here, these are your worst paying customers. They're paying you and the market late. So it might be something that you want to factor into um, your margins, knowing that you're going to get paid at 90 days plus. Um, it might also be something that you decide to move them to COD because they're always paying late, especially if they're dealing in smaller dollar values. In this segment down here, um, these customers are paying you on time, but the market late. Now you might think that's actually a good thing, but what we typically see is that you're a key or an A supplier to that type of company. And they start, they might be having cash flow problems and starting to pay other businesses late, but they haven't quite um, got to the stage where they're able to pay you late. So typically what we see is that companies in these areas, when they do start to pay you late, it's for bigger dollar values and they tend to disappear quite quickly. So it's a good idea to monitor these accounts closely. And as if you start to see some type of adverse information coming through, you may also want to um, move them to a COD type of arrangement. We've also added um, these markers which help you identify um, how they pay the market. So for example, the green area, you can see that they typically pay the market on time. Um, the orange area typically pays the market around that 30 to 60 day mark, but it's something you probably want to monitor closely. And the red area typically pays the market late. If you click out to, um, it, there's a graphical representation of that also. Now, if you look below, and if I decide to click a section, so I wanna look at the late payment trends, for example, you'll see the type of accounts there, how much they owe you in total, how they typically pay the market, their credit score, and, a collection priority. So this um, collection priority is an algorithm that looks at how they typically pay you versus the market and also incorporates their credit score and helps uh, identify maybe not the oldest accounts, but people who are probably likely to pay if you push them a little bit earlier in the process. 
So it's not always the oldest accounts. Um, like I said, sometimes it's difficult to get blood out of a stone. But if you can re-educate a debtor to, that's currently paying at 60 days um, and, and re-educate them to pay on time, that will have a significant impact on your DSO. Um, so it's about using your collectors and making sure that their time is spent in the best um, place. We know that usually um, companies basically start at 90 days plus at the beginning of a month and work backwards, um, but this helps challenge that methodology and really um, helps focus on other accounts that might be worth giving you a call slightly sooner. You can filter by all of these categories and it will readjust the debtors um, that you can see there. The other score that we uh, look at is our risk score. So this looks at the likelihood of a company failing within the next 12 months. And it um, takes into consideration a, a number of elephant, uh, elements, such as um, adverse information, the directors and whether the directors have been bad in the past, the type of industry that the entity belongs to, how long the entity has been operating, um, and we apply that to your age trial balance and all, your, all of your customers and come up with this graph. So once again, the whole idea is to aim for the green, monitor the orange and um, I guess avoid the red essentially. So if we look at um, the highest risk customers, these entities are paying you late and their credit score is quite low. So this means they're probably the biggest risk to your business uh, in terms of them failing and not being around. So what I would recommend is either moving these entities to COD if appropriate, if not, obviously monitoring extremely closely. In the moderate section, these entities have um, a relatively stable credit score and are also paying you um, within 60 days overdue. So this might be a good opportunity for you to um, bring some of these accounts forward and try and impact your DSO. And finally, the lowest risk customers, they have um, the highest credit score, so they're the most stable entities and they're paying you on time or fair, fairly close to within terms. So these are your best customers. These are customers you might want to extend more credit to. You might want to let the sales team know that um, these are your best customers. Can we get some more customers like this in a particular industry or a locality? Um, and you can identify that once again by clicking into the section and seeing a list of those companies below. You'll notice in the green section that the propensity to pay is slightly lower. Obviously, it's very difficult to get someone paying on current to pay any earlier because uh, they're currently paying their bills on time, which is fantastic. Um, the reason I really like this graph is it helps identify um, debtor creep. So where we see uh, debtors who slowly pay their bills slightly more overdue um, and are potentially starting to rack up debts elsewhere with other suppliers. Um, and they creep so slowly that it's difficult for you to identify, but they are starting to have those early warning signs of cash flow problems. Um, and where we typically pick that up is with a small uh, business payment default or um, through our small business payment information coming through Zero or MYOB. So I think you'll agree um, that the age trial balance tool data logic has had a significant revamp and there's a lot more information and hopefully you find it much easier to read, understand and use within your businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I find that um, when I show customers now that the system's um, significantly more intuitive and people are able to understand um, but also use the graphs uh, more within their business for reporting and hopefully challenge and prioritise the way that they typically do collections. We've also generated a, a Dead Logic how-to guide. So the Dead Logic how-to guide is a step-by-step -step process on how to access 
data logic, the best way to get insights on data logic, how to upload an age trial balance, how to understand the graphs. Um, and that's available for free download. Um, we'll actually send that out around um, with the webinar after this. But also please feel free to get in contact with Credit Watch if you'd like to look at that um, and you can't locate it. Just a quick poll question now. Um, if you would like to get some more information on DataLogic or potentially see your data within DataLogic and some of the insights that we can um, provide you, please let us know and we can get uh, an account manager in contact to show you the ins and outs of the uh, ATB product. It's a really good tool to use internally. We find it great for reporting um, and also challenging the way that people typically um, collect money within their business. So just going over some of those benefits again, um, looking for the highest propensity to pay customers and focusing collector time and effort on those customers. We find that that significantly um, improves the DSO or just um, allows you to move the needle slightly more rather than collecting the oldest debts first. Um, I find that analyzing your age trial balance against industry data and locality gives you further insights into um, markets you might be able to identify or work more within in the future. It also allows you to, to identify your most profitable com, uh, customers and look for common um, segments that you can target in the future. It's a great way to ingest a significant amount of data on a monthly basis, specifically um, small to medium sized business trade payment information. We know this is by far the most predictive payment information for two reasons. Firstly, it's coming from the worst paid companies in Australia. And secondly, we're getting this information live into our system every five minutes. So it's much more predictive than that typical corporate data being um, sent in once a month. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, I'll just leave a, a final poll about the insightfulness of Data Logic. If you do have any questions, um, please also add that into um, your, your uh, navigation bar and we can get back to you and it will allow us to help out. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your lunch. Thanks for having me as a guest uh, webinar um, attended or uh, provider today and I look forward to speaking to you all in the future. Thank you.